Hey everybody, welcome back once again to the Retro Game Fix Retro Jones Podcast number 79. This is your host Mitch. And this is Mike. And here we are once again. Uh, so Mike, long week, uh, long two weeks. Uh, actually, my bad. Uh, that was totally my bad last week uh, that we missed it. But uh, what have you been up to since the two weeks since we have spoken last? Oh man, I bought a couple couple games on the steam sale uh hooked up the atari sprayed some weeds around the house bought a headphone amp bought some new headphones i'm sorry i asked yeah a lot of stuff a lot of stuff going on over in uh over in the uh mike household no doubt what uh what you got going on player Ooh, i got plenty going on this week uh in fact handballs maybe Yes, actually, last time we left off, I was talking about uh, making a purchase that, uh, I guess, the following week for a Whirlwind, Williams Whirlwind Pinball, and um, I'm happy to say that that went through fine, and uh, it is home, and in fact, I think that had something to do with my missing our podcast last week. Uh, we had some people over to play some pinball last week, and uh, I got really, really drunk and forgot to podcast. It's all good. I get drunk <laughs> sometimes. Ooh, yeah, I got really drunk. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, I don't know where to start. I've got plenty to talk about as far as that goes, but I know you got plenty of stuff, too. Why don't you go ahead and start? I'll talk about that in a bit. Sure. So let's kick off with the Atari thing, because it's pretty recent. So I picked up that Atari lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for those that are new to the show, I grabbed a Atari lot with a bunch of, uh, well, about 110 Atari games in it. And in, well, speci- specifically, set, you were looking for a 7800, set, right? Yes, exactly, yes. So, within that lot was a bunch of boxed 7800 games and a 7800 system. Uh Last time we podcast, I had not hooked up the 7800 system yet, so I did that today, finally, mm-hmm. uh, after kind of unboxing everything, getting stuff looking nice on my shelf. I was like, hey, you know what? I should probably play some of these games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I plugged the Atari in. I, it powers up. Everything's okay. all good. I attached the RF unit, because it's RF, to my TV, pure static. Uh, okay, so you think it's the RF adapter? Well, I thought that. And so I was like, well, maybe it's the wrong channel. Channel, So I I tried the channel thing. Same thing actually looked worse. So I was like, all right, well, let me try a different RF unit. And then I try another RF unit, same thing. So I was like, okay, let me try this RF unit on my master system. Yep. Looked perfect. Mm. I was like, oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, so I'm guessing there's something wrong because it's like the picture doesn't come through great and the, it's just pure static. I can see the picture, I can hear the game, but it's pure static. Okay. The only thing I, I wonder is is there some sort of different resolution that could cause the 7800 to need a very specific RF unit? Because I think. As far as I'm aware, RF units are pretty universal. Yeah, in fact, you just had said you used it on your Sega Master System, and it worked fine. Yeah, I used to use them. I used to swap them back and forth back in the day with the Nintendo or the NES and the uh, the Master System. So I would I would guess they're pretty universal. It's the same connector, same everything. Yeah. I, so I would I, assume the Atari would have been the same thing. So yeah, same process, uh, yeah. sounds like the 7800, uh, or looks like the 7800 is probably toast. Um, but I'm not super concerned because of the lot that I got out of it. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. you the lot you got was awesome. And, and I don't know, I, I would do a little bit of research on that and, you know, I'm sure you're not the per- first person to run across that problem. It might just be like, shit, it might be like, well, I doubt it's like recapping or something, but it might be something that is. Oh shit. Is- Hold on. Sorry to jump in. Yeah. Atar, uh, on, Some forum that isn't even, like, legit, doesn't seem like. But I saw a post (laughs) about a 7800 heavy static using a Sega RF switch. The first response. The Atari 7800 is incompatible with the standard RFs. Oh! Use the one with a slide switch for the older consoles. Well, damn. 
Ain't that a son of a bitch? You learn something new every day. Well, that's good. It means your uh, 7800 is not crap. What did it come with? Uh, it came with some sort of automatic RF switch that was not an Atari RF switch. And then it also had the the RF unit that has like the two little Y prongs on it that you screw into the back of the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember oh, those? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, U- yeah. The UHF kind of Yeah. Shit? yeah. <laughs> and I don't. Oh, my God. So that's might, old school as fuck. Maybe. I, yeah. So we'll uh, I'll have to figure that out. Okay. Anyway, my Atari it probably isn't toast. Now I feel like a complete moron. Well, no, I mean you figured it out, and and f- in fact we saw the we we saw the whole process unfold right in front of our eyes. We certainly did. You certainly so. did. So there we go. So yeah, I'm. I guess I'll report back next week. But yeah, I went to play some Atari games. Yeah. Uh, after I got everything set up, uh, but a little more on Atari. So uh, we were kind of talking the the last couple weeks about. Uh, you and I both kind of get wild hairs, and I think this will segue into the pinball conversation, but oh get, my God. Yeah. get wild hairs on uh, well, spending money in general, but just kind of the collecting aspect of stuff, and <laughs> yes. I had the opportunity to grab a, a couple more complete in-box uh, 7800 games that were like three of the higher-priced ones that would have probably locked up the high-price games that I need for the 7800. Oh really? No doubt. Yeah, and, and so it would have been like probably two hundred bucks for the three, mm-hmm. and I, I passed on them uh, mostly because it's just like that's a lot of money. Yeah, well, just at some point I'm sitting here going, it's not two hundred bucks. That's the problem. It's looking back through the master system and then a lot of my other hobbies. Uh, the headphones, which which we'll get to later, and then the Mustang I'm restoring, were two hundred bucks once isn't the problem. It's two hundred bucks three like or four times. times. Yeah, and you go, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you stop and go, Shh, I need to prioritize my hobbies. So I, t- I I finally took a step back and said, okay, I need to figure out where I'm gonna spend money. Yeah. Uh, and then fast forward i spent money in a bunch of other places but i think that yeah so i think i'm definitely still going to uh collect the 7800 stuff but i just wanted some time to kind of take a step back and say i've got that mustang i want to get on the road it's summer a variety of other stuff i want to do and said you know what the 7800 stuff is probably going to take a back seat until uh winter rolls around in the uh, twin cities so yeah that makes sense i mean uh yeah eventually eventually you'll get back to it i mean it's just i'm I'm the same way i've got a a zillion things on my list of shit that i want to collect right now and i just have to i just have to figure out which way i want to go for now it's it doesn't mean that i'm not going to get there eventually but you know it is that's that's the way it works (laughs) so cool well um i mean so what were the games by the way i'm I don't. I don't know uh, anything was, about seventy eight hundred. It was, it was uh, fatal. Uh, fatal run. Actually, let me uh, let me pull it up because I have them bookmarked right here. They. I mean, they weren't. I mean, obviously, they're not. These. I mean, were they mint? Oh yeah, they were mint and sealed. It was. Uh, was it as a lot then that you? Were... No, they were separate. Uh, okay. The okay. thing was, though, I did check other previous sold listings of those that also weren't sealed because I wouldn't keep them sealed. Right. Um. And so I was like, well, I just I, I started to check the sold listings and was like, OK, these aren't always available, but they certainly are available. So I kind of pass on it. It was Fatal Run. OK. Then there was a I believe it was like. Clax or one of the other ones I didn't have. And then there was a third that I actually don't recall. But yeah, so it was three that were, you know, Fifty to sixty dollar games, and I just I didn't want to spend the money. I I hear that, dude. I I ran into that a couple times myself this and, week. And then sometimes, and then sometimes you regret it. But I I just I need to hit reset for once. Plus, uh, we got all of my daughter's uh, hospital bills from being born, so there was that. And you just kind of go, okay. I got 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 to kind of hit balance for a minute here, and then uh, and then I can maybe start spending money again. So, oh yeah, my first reaction when I got all my son's uh, hospital bills was holy fuck. Yeah, yeah. Well, and lucky luckily, uh, I had the foresight to pick the 
uh, low deductible plan for the last six months and some other stuff. So at the most, I'm out fifteen hundred bucks. But it actually looks like it, it, it actually only looks like I'm going to be spending about eight hundred to a thousand. Damn. So I've, I'm looking pretty good there, but it's still eight hundred to a thousand bucks. So. Yeah, I think I ended up spending like four grand or something. I think the I think the actual total at the hospital was like thirty thousand dollars or something. I was like, oh my god! Oh yeah, no bueno. What yeah. did you do that was that important? Yeah, so this was just violent stuff that had to fall on my insurance. So, oh yeah, that's just yeah, that's yeah, just yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. So violent stuff came to about I think like six or seven grand. So. Um, I might be responsible for up to 1500 of that, which is totally fine. I'm not even saying like, oh my God, it's not fine. It's totally fine. But you know, when, when those bills like that pop up, you just go, okay, uh, I need to hit the brakes, which I did for a couple days. And then I bought headphones and an amp, but we'll get to that later in the podcast. Damn dude. Well, I know you're paying as far as that goes. I think a couple months ago, I finally got all my son's shit paid off. So I understand. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess I'll go into the pinball stuff because I, I'll tell you what, man. You talk about, like, you know, sometimes we, we have to prioritize or sometimes we, we just kind of jump around as collectors, you know. We've had, if we look back, we talked about this last time. Like, we was really excited about the Game Gear for a while, right? hmm And the Game Gear, I love the Game Gear. I do. I'm just not obsessed with it right this second. Uh, and then before that, of course, the Sega Master System and... When we get into something, me and you, we get obsessed about it. And it's like, what is that? What's the best thing? I want it. Um, it I'll tell you what. I, I'm 100% sure you know exactly what my uh, current obsession is right now. Pinball. And everybody will say it. And friends of mine in the hobby around town have said, have said it before. Um, you know, you'll get the bug. And I've had the bug before. And uh, somehow I got away from it. And I got it again. I definitely have it again. So, um, what, so anyway, I guess, God, I got so much to talk about here. I'll try to just kind of summarize it, uh, efficiently here. Um, so uh, I guess, uh, last Saturday I picked up my whirlwind and I got to tell you too, I got no pictures from this dude that was sent. He's a nice guy. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not like ripping on him at all. He was a super nice guy, but like he was super busy with work and stuff. And I, I, I emailed him the first day and was like, Hey man, do you still have that whirlwind? I'm interested. Could you please send pictures? And then the next day comes. I don't hear anything. So I call him. Uh, I leave a message. And then I get a text message with a couple pictures. And they're like, of course, like crafted pictures. I could tell. It's like from a specific angle where there's LEDs or something. So you, you, you can't really tell like play field wear. And you, you can't really tell anything from the pictures. You know Yeah, what I'm you're saying? like, uh, there's only one reason a picture would be taken from that angle. Uh-huh. Exactly. And... I mean, I'm aware of this. I just, I don't care if there's wear on the, of course there's going to be wear on the plate. You just kind of want to know what the wear is would be nice. Well, I just don't want to be surprised. I'm I'm not a big, I'm not big on surprises like that. You know, I don't think anybody is uh, as far as condition. Because, you know, it's like, you know, it's going to be a project to some extent, you know, and um, I know eventually I, I've got the, I've the CPR play field. I'm on the waiting list for that. But shit, that could take like a year and a half, you know, or two years. It might take two years to get that. I don't know. It might take a month. But um, so anyways, I, get, I have no indication of of uh, condition of this thing. And I'm kind of sweating it a little bit because I see in one of the pictures I was like, you know, on the topper of whirlwind there's like this big cloud topper and it's got a fan on the inside i was like i can't see the fan blade in there is there a fan blade he didn't say anything about that so i'm like okay oh i I see that i see in the back of the play field I, i was like i don't see the there's a plastic in the back with a big lightning bolt that has a bunch of flasher bulbs and stuff on a board behind it i was like i don't see that but i don't have a good angle so whatever so fast forward to the saturday when me and my buddy actually go and pick it up um I, I get there and like I don't I don't know if it was the amount of money that I'm putting down for this thing or whatever. I'm just like, oh my god! I like reality hits me when I see this thing. I was like, what a piece of shit, you know? Like <laughs> I'm like, and I'm telling myself like, because I'm like, I'm seeing it, I'm playing it just initially, and uh, it plays fair, it plays okay, and uh, you know, it shoots out uh, two balls when it's supposed to shoot out one, like in the, it, it just, just crap like that, where I just noticed this annoying, like, 
that's going to have to be fixed and that's going to have to be fixed. And it's all like small stuff. It's going to take me like five minutes a piece, if even that. But it's stuff where I'm like, God, man, I really don't know if I feel up to this. I almost passed on it. I came really close to passing on this thing. And let me tell you, I'm so glad I didn't. Um, first of all, you have collector's condition and you have player's condition and anything in between. It's all subjective what everything is. This thing had been routed. This thing had been played before. Um, the play field just looked dirty. It looked filthy, you know. So uh, I, I decided, I was like, you know what? A good a, a whirlwind generally you're going to pay around like 2000 2200 bucks or something like that even for a player's condition one and I was paying like 1500 bucks so I was like okay you know I can put the little bit of work in it it's another pinball I really want this one whatever so uh, I pay the guy we load it up we get it back home and I notice just like I can't play an entire game because there's all this small piddly shit that doesn't work on it you know so I'm just like, ah, oh, sighing, you know, um, I'm like, I'm glad I got it, but I'm also like already overwhelmed because I'm like, I don't have time to scratch my butt anymore with my kid, you know, like I love my kid to death and I'm so glad I have him. But I think any parent, um, yourself included, can probably uh, can probably, uh, you know, back me up on that one. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's you're st- now it's like, OK, now I really have to prioritize time. Really, really it is. And this is one of those things that people told me um, before, you know, before I had a kid. And I believe them. I was just like, not me, though. I can always find time to do this stuff, you know. And I'll tell you what. No, I can't. I can't. I don't have as much time to dedicate to a lot of stuff that I used to. You know, I, I'm just exhausted the other half of the time, you know. Yeah, and it's not always just the finding the time. It's just that, you know. Babies aren't on a schedule, and so sometimes it's like, oh fuck. Mine's not. <laughs> I was gonna. I planned on doing. Nope. I guess I'm not doing that right now. I made dinner tonight, and it was like, oh, I guess my dinner's gonna sit and get cold. That's the way it happens, man. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not complaining about any of that. It's just a statement of fact that I, I just don't have the time I used to. Like I used to. Shit. You know, when I was restoring like my baby Pac Man and the Tron and the Mad Planets and like the Qbert and like all that. Everything that I I used to restore stuff like 24-7. I used to spend like 10 hours a day sometimes, you know. Um, I don't have 10 hours a day anymore, unfortunately. Uh, I'm still figuring that out. But, and again, I don't mind. It's just as a fact. So, anyways, my buddy leaves. I get my kid down for a nap eventually. And I I just kind of dig in. And I shit you not, 25 minutes later, every little piddly thing on that thing is fixed. It works perfectly. (laughs) Um, I also noticed that, uh, have you ever heard the term shopping a pinball? Uh, no. Okay. Shopping a pinball is such a subjective bullshit term. Um, I don't, I don't think there's a, uh, if somebody ever tells you that, Hey man, I just shopped this pinball. I want like X amount of money for it. Like that's a selling point. Be like, what exactly did you do to shop a pinball? Mm, I see where you're going. So generally a shopping, fully shopping a pinball is like, in my understanding of it, like actually doing a good job of it is completely stripping everything off the top of the play field, waxing it, uh, you know, through step processing, uh, you know, getting a, getting a nice wax on it, on it at, at the end, uh, several times just to basically clean off the play field and all that stuff. You can't really have like stuff on there. Otherwise wax is going to get over everything. And then the shit's just going to dry there and it's going to look like crap. So uh, plus like replacing all the bulbs, um, you know, there's a lot involved in truly like actually doing a good job of shopping machines. Sometimes you have to replace things. Um, Generally it's just to, just to get it back in, in good condition. So anyways, then there's the guys that say I shop this pinball and this is, a, you know, quote unquote shopped on the very, very, very much half ass lower end where it might even look better had they just left it alone. This was the this was the thing with my world when I quickly found after I switched all the things that were wrong with it was that somebody had gone through and dumped a bunch of wax on the play field while everything was still on there and just wiped it around until most of it was gone. Now, there's still streaks of like wax so it looks so shitty like the play field because there's just wet dried wax all over it Mm. so i got in there i just really got in there you know uh really took all took everything off 
and uh, just cleaned up the play field, everything. I, I wouldn't say I fully shopped it or anything like that. You know, I got any lights, any switches that weren't working, all that stuff. And it looks pretty damn nice. I got to say, it's a, under all that just garbage, um, it was, it's a pretty damn nice, decent looking machine. I'm not going to say it's like nice. It's maybe like a six out of 10. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like, you know, eventually it's going to be mint. It's not that now, but. <laughs> Oh my God, I've been playing it so much. I love it. And so does my wife. And so does everybody as everybody that's come over. We've had so much company come over and play pinball ever since then. It's, it's amazing. I love it. I got the, uh, the fan blade that I was talking about uh, for the top topper. Um, they sell a repro one for 13 bucks. So I went ahead and bought that. I, I, I got some WD-40, of course, uh, disassembled the motor for the fan and cleaned everything out. It works perfectly. Um, there, that that plastic that I was telling you about in the back. Mm-hmm. The problem was there's a lamp board behind it, and uh, I did not have that or the plastic, and I was kind of shitting a brick because looking everywhere, nobody had one. And I put ads up on Pinside, K-Love, everywhere, and nobody had one. So I was like, nobody reproed one, no, nothing. So I'm like, I'm screwed here. Because the cool thing is it's like a lightning bolt where they have flasher bulbs where – in the plastic, it's actually a lightning bolt, but the flasher bulbs make it look like this lightning is flashing and shit. It's pretty creative. So uh, anyways, last resort, I just uh, texted the guy that I bought it from. I was like, hey, you don't happen to have one of these, do you? Because he's owned several world ones in his day. And he was like, no, I'll go check. And I was like, this is hopeless. Turns out he has one and two plastics for it. So um, I went up and picked that up, and now it's complete. I mean, it's at least complete at this point. So there's some wacky shit in there. Like somebody replaced one of the red pop bumpers with a blue one, like just a pop bumper cap. So I ordered a red pop bumper cap, and it doesn't fit because the entire pop bumper assembly was replaced with something that doesn't belong there. So there's just little crap like that that is just kind of annoying the shit out of me. But for the most part, I love it. What a great pinball. I love pinball. You know, I've just been pretty much just been down there playing it. And the funny thing is my Flash Gordon is actually really nice. But being from a different area, it's 10 years older. Um, it, it, I love it. Now, I mean, it's, it, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it because different pinball eras, they play differently. It's almost like playing in like zero gravity when I play that thing. It, it rolls so much different. I guess the pitch of the play field and everything is is completely different, but it's so much slower playing than the uh, other one, but it's still impossible. But uh, anyway, um, so yeah, that's what that is. Uh, I, uh, I'm just going to keep talking about it. Um, so let me let me say this. So I am getting rid of my Mad Planets. Did I say that last time? Uh, you hinted at it, but I don't know if, if uh, you completely confirmed, but it's... Sometimes our conversations versus the podcast blend together. So you may have, but I don't think so. Okay, I'm getting rid of my Mad Planets. Why am I getting rid of it? Um, one of the most coveted arcade machines out there. Um, it just, I'm bored. I'm bored with it. It's a great game. It is a fantastic game. But when you've had a game in your collection for so long, it's just like, shit, I need to move on. I need to cash out on this thing. So <laughs> anyway... Um, And that's the problem is that now with this whirlwind, I had to move my red tent in the garage. Um, Just stuff is stacking up. My Tron's out in the garage now. Like, I don't have any space for all this stuff. So I made the decision to get rid of my Mad Planets. And my good friend Whitney Roberts from uh, the Broken Token podcast is actually buying it. So he's coming down here in August. And while he's here, staying overnight, I figure, why don't we just fire up a podcast and have him on here? So look out for that. And uh, I'm also selling my Tron. So with the two sales of those, I am buying a new inbox Ghostbusters. And I think that is going to be the final uh, the Ghostbusters pinball. I'm sorry. That's going to be the final uh, final choice for that. So, man, I'm going to be I was going to say balling, but that's kind of cheesy in pinballs. But uh, I will have five. I see what you did there, though. Yeah. So I'll have five pinballs at that point again. Uh, I have my Flash Gordon. I have the Whirlwind. I'll have Ghostbusters. I'll have my Baby Pac-Man, which is kind of like half of a pinball. And also, I've got a an EM, an electromechanic uh, pinball. So before Solid State, before computers, it's like old school racing theme. Um, 
that uh, I still have to restore that's in my in my garage. So get, get that fired up too, and I will have five pinballs in my collection once again. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about all that. I'm especially stoked about this Ghostbusters because I can't remember. I got to tell you this honestly. I can't remember the last time I bought any arcade or pinball machine that didn't have some shit wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this I feel one, you. This one will be new in the box, so I'll at least have a warranty on it. Somebody else can fix it if, if there's a problem <laughs> with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I mean, that'll be the nice thing. It's kind of like pinballs are kind of like sports cars. You're like, this is really fun. Uh, Broke. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> Got to fix it. Uh, it's not so fun anymore. Pretty much, pretty much. And then it's so, like, oh, it's fixed. This is so much fun. Oh, it's arcade broke. games in general are like that. Jesus, dude. So, I mean, it, the, the every year that goes by, they're older. I mean, most of them are 30 years plus. So, um, you know, even the, the whirlwind's like 26 years old. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, that's the way it is. It's like fun, 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 broke. <laughs> yep. So anyway, I, I'm I'm unloading a bunch of shit too. I'm probably gonna probably gonna get rid of the red tent, the Nintendo red tent. Uh, probably I, missile commands gone. I mean, gonna be gone. Tron, I haven't got a buyer for that yet, but um, it's it's mint. It's completely mint and restored fully. Uh, if anybody's looking for one, so anyway, um, so yeah, man, that's my story. That's my long winded story, but I guarantee you, just like the Sega Master System, the Game Gear before it, all those things, I'm pretty excited about this. So I have a feeling that you're probably going to hear about pinball one way or another. I'll try to throw some history and all that crap in there as well, uh, as we go to make it also informative instead of just talking about how awesome it is. But um, yeah, I guess that's my story. So so tell us a little bit. You alluded to the headphones. I'm, I'm fascinated by this whole thing. So you are, you are, you've turned into a headphone connoisseur. Yeah. Oh, man. I've turned in, into, I don't know if audio so, fi- file is the correct term, but when it comes to headphones, man. What's the, what's the backstory on this anyways? What got you so into hi- headphones? Uh, I, 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 I don't... I, I don't know, so I, I will just start out with where it all began, and maybe we can iron it out through conversation. <laughs> all right. Um, so, well, maybe, by the way, yeah. thank you for the life of Pixel. I actually meant to snag that, and I did not. So, thank you for yes, sending I that sent over. that. Sent that your way. It's a Steam sale. Back yeah, bucks, man. Buck seventy-five. So I appreciate that. <laughs> um. So. About a year and a half ago, I started dabbling in wireless Bluetooth headphones. Uh-huh. Uh, mowing the lawn, other things, exercise, bunch of other stuff around around the yard, things like that. And then uh, I really kind of got back into... Uh, so we kind of had a little bit of a hiatus with the podcast. And during that time, I had purchased a few different pair of mixing headphones for the audio interface because Mm -hmm. the recording aspect of stuff has always really fascinated me. And so with that, I started to get a little more excited about headphones and the recording part of, of audio. And then I'd purchase some Sennheiser momentums, which are on ear headphones, not over the ear. And I was like, Holy shit. Mm -hmm. These sound ridiculous. Yeah. And these were 150 bucks. I was like I didn't know I didn't know headphones could sound like this. And so the more research that I did, the more I was like the more it came up like, yeah, you could spend 10 grand on a listening room in your house. And certainly there are like 5, 6, 7, 8,000 dollar pairs of headphones. I am not there yet. Uh mm. but then I started buying all these headphones that I saw pop up and it was um especially gaming stuff from the Sony wireless golds to the stereo Microsoft to the Sennheiser game zeros and the game ones and the a- the Astro a fifties. I just started mm-hmm. buying every pair of headphones that I could get my hands on. And I started to realize that there was nuances to each headphone and i started to research about the pros and the cons and the this and the that and the last serial at night i went into a lot of that um Mm -hmm. as far as what you need to look for in gaming headphones so anyway fast forward to about three months ago uh there's a guy at work that's a big prince fan and i'm a big prince fan 
Mm-hmm. And he says, yeah, you know what? Uh, if this was actually before Prince had died. He goes, yeah, you know what? I, I, I'm wondering what it would be like to buy a really nice set of headphones. And at this point, I'd already kind of been researching it, going like, I want to get something that's not only just nice headphones that I plug into my computer, but like a really nice unit, an amp, uh, 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 an actual quality DAC or digital audio converter. And I said, well, let me tell you about this stuff. And so he gets the wild hair and goes out and buys uh, an $800 pair of headphones, a $600 amp, all this shit. He's like, I challenge you. And I and I hear it, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so all of a sudden, I have, so I have these Sennheiser HD 598s. Fucking great headphones. Great headphones. Like, if you are looking to spend 150 bucks on a pair of headphones, you can plug in almost anything. Go get the HD 598 Sennheisers. They're awesome. If you're looking for mm. gaming headphones, go get the Game 1s or the Game 0s. So anyway... After he does that, I'm like, I need an amp. Right. And so I go out and I this just this weekend I ordered what they call the bottlehead crack amp with the speedball modification uh, for 300 bucks. It's normally 450, uh, and, and you have to assemble this amp yourself. So I'm going to do that. And then I ordered the HD 650 Sennheisers, which are a really great pairing for this amp. So that's where. It, you know, to make a short story long or a long story longer, that's where I'm at with my headphones. Huh. So, uh, on YouTube, I've done a lot of videos about the headphones. And right. the one thing a lot of people always ask is, which ones should I buy? And as much as I wish, wish there was a silver bullet and I could tell everybody which headphones you could buy, right? I just can't. And it's always comes down to what you're looking for. And the other in, in all of almost 95% of the feedback has been positive. But the other part of the feedback is always like, he said this versus this or this versus this. The one other thing I want to say is when I do the YouTube videos, I am trying to simplify it as much as I can for people that are trying to purchase these headphones to understand. Mm. And so anybody coming in and saying, you said this wrong or said this wrong. I would be more than willing to have an audiophile jargon conversation with people, but that's not what the YouTube videos are for. It's really just to give people an idea that here's what I've used. Here's what I bought. Here's what I've found. Mm-hmm. Uh, now go do some research. But right. uh, man, I just, I, I love, I just, I love headphones, man. Just uh, f- Friday night. Uh, when I ordered that amp and stuff, I was up. I probably listened to my five nine eights for six or seven hours, just listening to music, man. And it's it's just, I don't know, I don't know. I just love it. I love it. Fantastic. So, uh, so yeah, it's just uh, it turned into this weird hobby for me, and uh, it's I'm foregoing buying a second GTX ten eighty to get uh, to get these headphones and this amp and stuff. So. Damn, dude, that says a lot by itself. <laughs> yeah, foregoing the second 1080 that you really don't need. Really don't need it. Uh, really don't need, you know, the headphones and the amp either. But you know, it's hobbies, man. That's that's what it is. Absolutely, cool. Right on. So again, just to plug it, if you want to see more about audio reproduction, headphones, stuff like that. YouTube.com slash Retro Game Fix, along with a bunch of other fun videos. I retweeted a lot of our Sega Master System stuff this last week. Uh, a, lot, a lot of other things out there. So go check out the YouTube channel. Indeed. Indeed. So so one of the things, by the way, let's go ahead and talk about this for a second. Um, one of the things that we're going to start to kind of do here every once in a while, just kind of once a month, we're going to shoot for, we're going to go ahead and reach out and uh, kind of have some interviews on here. Um, we've got a couple that we've been talking about that, um, you know, I talked about Scott Schreiber had, and uh, UK Mike are, are going to join us at some point here and talk about the um, Coleco chameleon at some point in their own words. Um, but, I guess one of the first guys we're probably going to have on here. Why don't you go ahead and set it up, Mike? Because you're you're the guy that's been in contact. 
Sure. So I, I don't want to get too far ahead uh, because nothing is set in stone at this point. But um, we've talked before about how much we enjoyed Console Wars. Yep. Um, the, the book Console Wars. Yes. Which is... Yeah. Not con- Console Wars. We also enjoy here and there. But the book Console Wars by Blake J. Harris. Mm-hmm. And so I've t- tweeted back and forth with him uh, a couple times just because... The book fascinates me, A, and the access that he uh, was able to get, especially on the Sega side, is just awesome. So anyway, June of last year, uh, the hardcover came out, and we promptly bought it and read through it, and then this year he re-released the paperback, and I was kind of just thinking about it a little bit the other day, and I tweeted at him online and said, hey, man, uh, again, a couple of huge fans. The book's awesome. You wrote a book that's technically going to go down as one of the best gaming reads of all time. You know, how does that's got to feel pretty fucking awesome. He was like, it absolutely does. And so I kind of said, hey, you know what? You want to be on the podcast? Uh, he said, sure. You know, and we got to certainly work out some schedule stuff. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we can get Blake J. Harris on on the year anniversary of console wars uh well about a month later and uh talk through some of that stuff and then uh and then yeah maybe once a month moving forward we're gonna you know have other people on to interview so it's a fun time but i think that's a good way to kind of kick off the interviews for the podcast yeah and sometimes too like i said with whitney roberts from broken token i mean um just a podcast with them um i i think if he's if he's open to that when he comes and picks up his mad planets uh, from Kentucky, uh, I would say hop on the podcast. Let's have a couple beers and let's talk some let's talk some games and stuff. So, anyway, that's what we're gonna try to go. I mean, I've, we've got so many lined up. Um, again, we're gonna try to do like we're not gonna try to get in over our heads. I mean, scheduling sometimes is a pain in the butt. So, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna probably start with that. I told Mike to push that one out a couple weeks though because I kind of want to go through and reread uh, Console Wars because it's been about a year or more since I've read that. About a year, I guess. Since I've read that one, but a lot of good stuff in that book. Um, it's really in depth. I, I guess it's more like Sega centric uh, than it is Nintendo, and 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 um, it's just really uh, it's really fascinating because you get a lot of behind the scenes looks at what was going on back in that time, and it's just really nice to. It's kind of one of those things that when I read it, it was like, well. I guess I never thought that it was possible that these stories could be told because, you know, you just assume that they've been lost to history or whatever. And, and, you know, it's like video games for the most part, um, uh, for the most part, it's, it's hard to find like some consensus on, on certain topics in video gaming history, you know, it's, it, uh, so it was really interesting to hear it. Um, you know, he, he had a lot of interesting, uh, contacts that he had, he had spoken to and, I'm just I have a lot of questions for him, but I want to I want to read that again. So stay tuned for that. Um, possibly in a couple of weeks, we'll we'll figure it out. It all depends on scheduling, but we wanted to give you a heads up as far as that goes. Um, yeah, I mean, we've just made, uh, you know, so many. I mean, myself as well. Um, so many contacts in the arcade and pinball department um, in the last couple of years that I'm like, why don't we? I would love to talk to some of these people because I always have questions and I've kind of, I'm, I'm really curious about a lot of things and I, I think a lot of our listeners do too. So, um, so that'd be awesome. Uh, and, and, uh, so, so anyway, just want to, wanted to go ahead and, and, and give a heads up on some of that stuff. So we're going to start doing that, um, you know, uh, pretty soon I'm guessing. So anyway, um, so anyway, back to our topics here. So Mike, what else did you have going on? You you had rail, railed off a couple things here. Yeah, so I, pl- I fired up Sonic. Okay. I'm really not... Like the original Sonic? The Sonic 1. Yeah. I'm not very good at it. Oh, okay. Were you ever? I don't remember. No, I can. I remember. No. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I, I played... I tried to play Sonic for about an hour and a half, and the problem is... Uh, so here's what I realized. So... Here's what I realized now going back to play Sonic. For me, Sonic's this game where you want to go fast, 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 fast. The problem is the screen only shows you so much mm-hmm. at a time, and sometimes you're going fast. They set you up. You have no effing idea where you're going to land. They they set you up all the time, too. You're, it's you're, like, you're like, oh, got, shit, landed on the spikes. Points or 96 rings or whatever, and then you go through a loop, and it flings you right into a bunch of spikes, and you lose all of them. 
Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, so today I played, like I said, for about an hour, hour and a half, and um, I forgot that you can't continue. So you uh, just have to, or, or, it, 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 it depends. Uh, you got to get the Chaos Emeralds, and I yes, believe yes, those, yes. those will give you uh, continues, right? Yeah, but I didn't get any of that shit because <laughs> I'm bad. And so I kept getting to the Marble Hills or whatever. And That's my least favorite level, too. It's, it's just so bland and boring, but uh, yeah, I started, I just couldn't, It that one becomes a little bit more platforming, like, oh, I got to go slow, I got to go a little bit, bit more deliberate with my jumps, and I just kept dying over and over, um, which was fine, but what did stood up? what really stood out to me though, is I was still having a blast with it. Yeah. And I know, and I know a lot of times people go Mario or Sonic, yo, we're far enough removed. They're different games. I actually still love them both. Um, but I, yeah, how could you not? I think at this point, everybody does, right? No, Sonic's gotten a lot of hate lately just because of how many bad Sonic games have come out since one and two. Oh man. How many bad Mario games have come out? (laughs) There's like Mario's missing, like uh, just a bunch of crap Mario games. I mean, they're they're mostly awesome. Don't get me wrong. Sure, but but uh, yeah, there was a lot of garbage. But yeah, I uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I didn't get much farther than that, but um, I definitely plan on playing a little more maybe tonight. But uh, you know, try to at least get uh, get a little further tomorrow. So you know, with my Genesis, I've got like I've got a bunch of games for it, I guess. But the only one that I ever play is Sonic Two. And uh, Sonic 2 is fun. I, I actually, I really like Sonic 2. I like Sonic 1 because of the music. The music is awesome in that. And and I think it's purely nostalgic. I don't, it probably doesn't hold up for like, I'll find out. We can test some of these theories in a few years with our kids. And be like, all right, what do you think? You know, and if they're like, it sucks, then, you know, it's just nostalgic. Then they obviously have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, that too. I'll be like, ah, uh, you can't be my kid. <laughs> But um, anyway, so uh, but yeah, the music in the first one was really what was interesting to me. I find myself I really do like like the first level is just awesome, you know, and I think that's the most nostalgic like that has the most nostalgic like value to me because that's most of, you know, when I played Sonic one, at least that's that's pretty much mostly where I ended up. For the most part, you know, on level one. Mm-hmm. But the marble zone, the, the second level, I just, I always thought it was just so ugly and like, I don't like it. So, um, but anyway, Sonic 2, I thought was, was better and even more intense and stuff. I don't know. I like, I do like Sonic games. So, yeah, Sonic I, I games are awesome. Actually, I, I still think, I don't think St- Sonic Spinball got enough recognition. I remember playing the hell out of that. I don't know what you think about it because it's not, technically pinball but i had a lot of fun with sonic spinball but it was kind of on the tails of um to be honest and and my mom and i used to play it all the time back in the day oh speaking of which why don't i own that uh i have to order that like right now at some point tonight Uh, i'm gonna order that uh but uh crew ball is awesome um anyway sonic spinball i gotta be honest with you i only played it on the uh game gear and um game gear version is not that good Mm. So um, it's okay. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not good either. So yeah, get it on. Get it on Genesis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll I'll pick it up on Genesis too. I'm sure it's probably like a couple bucks. So I, I just um, bought a sealed Game Gear version for ten dollars. When? Right now. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's 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 not a lot of Game Gear games. That's what really got me into the Game Gear at first. Anyway, is was that the sealed games were like, God, I got a I got a sealed copy of Sonic One for Game Gear for like five bucks shipped. I'm gonna do an unboxing of this. You and you and your sealed games, man. You just can't you can't help it, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Every time Mike gets a sealed game, he's like, I kind of want to open it. I gotta open it. Oh, I'm not going to open it. I get a call like 10 minutes later. I opened it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Sealed sealed games are like, it's dangerous. I'm opening it. <laughs> Why? Because I would have bought a, I would have bought an open one if I didn't plan on opening it. I bought it sealed so I can open it. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. 
No, that's fine. I mean, I, I've got a bunch of sealed, uh, unopened uh, Game Gear stuff, but I'm I'm really like I really don't want to open it. You know. You know why? Because I am at. You know how like unboxings and things are so popular now. Yeah. There wasn't YouTube when the Game Gear came out. Oh yeah, that's true. So now that there's still sealed copies available, I feel like I owe it to the internet to do an unboxing now that <laughs> you that now that YouTube all actually the, all exists. These- purists are going to be out there and it's going to be like a kick to the nuts when you're like i'm gonna unbox this thing that's been in a box for 30 years there's 43 more available sealed so oh is that right yeah i could order two yeah who gives a crap then i usually do that if i if there's like uh because because the thing is too like um game gear unopened it's incredible again that's what really got me into game gear in the first place that's what really sparked that last thing was that unopened like sealed in box game gear stuff is like a dime a dozen you know you can find sealed game gear games for cheap that are mint it's crazy it's awesome actually i i I, unfortunately by with you telling me about that again and reminding me i want to go buy some sealed in box game gear stuff um, but I'm so like, I shouldn't spend any more money right now, but I totally want to, I want to buy, I want a sealed copy of Sonic Spinball. Well, there's a bunch of them on eBay for nine. Actually, I think I, actually, I think I own it, but um, Is it sealed, I want another though? one. I you, think I own a sealed one. Yeah. You could open it. No, I, I wouldn't open it. I want the sealed one. Well, then why would you want it sealed? I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Howly. No, I don't know. I'm joking. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's the uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think you just totally now. I'm now I'm curious. I want to go buy one now. Anyway, my Sonic literally was like five dollars, brand new, sealed. It shipped five bucks. So uh, anyway, um, I don't know how we got on that tangent, but um, but yeah, man, I I pretty much otherwise this week I I've been so like here's the funny thing is i've been looking i've been like total pinball in the brain again and i've been that way before um years ago and of course unfortunately it was before pinball prices have i i think i mentioned this last time too like it's it sucks my pin bot that i used to own i would be hard pressed to find one in the same condition for twice as much as i sold mine for uh like five years ago Mine, I sold, I was so happy to get 1100 bucks. I was like, wow, I totally ripped that guy off. And now it's like, I, I'd be hard pressed to find one in that condition for double the price. So I'm really like kind of weird about it. But I've been looking everywhere and seeing there's Mr. Pinball Classifieds. And I came across, because I was looking for Pinbot, this person that had a Pinbot, Bride of Pinbot, um, Elvira and the Party Monsters, and um, Johnny Mnemonic, which is awesome. All of those, that's like, you know, like ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand, I don't know, dollars worth of pinballs, and they're asking a thousand a piece. And I was like, oh my god, I will drive to Ohio to pick these up or whatever. But it was kind of a like an older ad, so I emailed them, and uh, of course, I never got an email back. But um, God, if I would have gotten a deal like that, because like Pinbot's awesome, but Brida Pinbot is like super highly regarded. It's like. Sub- you know, people a lot. Most people say it's the best in the series. Mm-hmm. Elvar and the Party Monsters, like four thousand dollar game. Uh, Johnny Mnemonic's probably like a four thousand dollar game as well. You know. Um, anyway, God, I wish I wish when that like that ad had popped up, I could have just called that person because I was going through in my head. It was before I went to bed. I was like, all right, if this person still has these games, how in the hell am I going to get them from Ohio to Atlanta? You know. Yeah. So, so you didn't hear you didn't hear anything back. Then. I did not, and uh, they're long, long, long gone. I guarantee it. So um, I can't believe people too. Like I love people like that, but I can't believe people that don't like actually go check the value of some certain things. <laughs> like really, you're gonna sell all of those pinballs for a thousand dollars each for four thousand dollars? I can get all those pinballs? Are you fucking crazy? Of course I'll take them. You know, I will walk to Ohio. To buy those for <laughs> You're like, I will walk to Ohio, put wheels on those things, and walk them back. Yeah, I'll just like separately. get a chain and yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would. 
Anyway, I totally got pinball in the brain, but I think I'm going to be trading some uh, arcade machines in, uh, kind of cashing out on some arcade machines and putting them into some pins. So I'll take some pictures. We'll throw them up on. Uh, you did throw you threw one picture up. Excuse me, I'm having a of sneeze attack here. I did. Ah, yes, I did good. put a whirlwind up. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's 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 not the nicest machine ever, but uh, it's it's not the worst. It will be the nicest machine ever by the time it's done. So I'm super stoked. I and this makes me think too. I'm like, I'm totally gonna take my flash cord and I'm still gonna strip that thing down and send that play field into uh to a HSA pinball. <laughs> I am uh, sorry, I'm having a complete sneeze attack here. I was wondering what that noise was. Oh, uh, I keep moving away from the mic. I apologize. If you hear anything, I am having major allergies right now. Uh, it's all good. Sorry. Um, so any, so anyway, my flash cord and I'm still. I think that's in the cards for the next week or two. I'm going to go ahead and strip that thing down and um, mail it off to HSA Pinball and end up spending 900 bucks getting that thing restored. <laughs> so I don't know. I just want some su- super sweet, nice, perfect pinball machines. That's all I want. So um, anyway, so that, that honestly, honestly, that's all I had to talk about this week. Uh, really, I mean, it's not really a too eventful of a week except for that i've just been playing the shit out of some pinball so i don't know if you had anything to add to that mike no not that i can think of it uh hmm no i i'm kind of just sitting here going like man now i want to go try to find a different rf unit in the house to see if i can get that atari going i don't even know what they mean by the slider rf well i unit. think I, so I, I, so i'm wondering if so on the back of the 7800 there's a switch that looks like it changes it from channel three to channel four uh-huh. uh or two to three whatever the switch does uh-huh. but then i remember rf units also having the channel switcher so yeah I'm, i, I so vaguely I'm, so remember i'm wondering, so I, I wondering if you need to ma- i'm wondering if you need to match the channel on the switch to the unit for some mm. reason. Otherwise it's kind of in between the two and it just looks like shit. Yeah. I have no uh, idea. I don't know. I, I'm actually, I'm looking at one right now. Uh, that's weird. I, I guess I, I've never seen anything like that. I'm totally, uh, I'm totally wrong. I, Cause I was, I saw one in my head and I was like, this looks nothing like it. So anyway, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm intri- I'm glad your uh, 7800 is not crapped out. That would have been kind of a buzzkill. Well, I hope not. I mean, stay tuned, but I, it doesn't sound like it. Dude, I'm looking forward to that. Send some pictures. I don't even know what a 7800 game looks like, to be honest. Uh, the cartridge? No, like what the uh, actual like game looks like. Oh, yeah. Well, like, I was going to play Akari Warriors because there's Akari Warriors on Nintendo. So I was like, oh, let me see what that looks like in comparison. Dude, I love Akari Warriors. Um, so I wanted to uh, compare uh, the NES version versus uh, the 7800. I bet the 7800 is probably a little bit better. Uh, the uh, Nintendo, the Nintendo one was awesome. I loved it, but um, you know, when you do the side by side comparison, I, my money would be on the uh, 7800, probably looking better. No kidding. So, I I don't know. I well, guess I could be wrong. Well, I don't know. I'll check it. I'll let you know. Every I bet that I bet there's a double dragon port on there too. There is a double dragon port for the 7800. That is actually one I haven't seen on eBay. Really? Yeah, that is one I actually want, and I haven't been able to pull it up. Yeah, well, I don't know. Keep an eye out. Cool, man. So right on. Well, right on. Well, cool. Well, I don't have anything to add to that this week. Um, of course we're gonna we'll be back next week. We'll have a little bit more. Um. Uh, kind of direction and uh, kind of know where we're when we're gonna try to have Blake J. Harris on, and um, we'll let you know. So yeah, for sure, nothing's, until- nothing's completely set in stone, but we'll uh, we'll try to make that happen. Yep. So anyway, for this week, uh, Retro Game Fix Podcast number seventy nine of the Retro Jones kind. This is Mitch. This is Mike. We'll see you next week. See you. <laughs>